Vinyl Community. It's your boys Chris and Josh coming at you live from uh, my Nissan Altima, uh, heading on 77 South on down to a place that we haven't been in over a decade uh, for a long overdue. 20 quick, years for me. Yeah, overdue, a long overdue, quick little getaway to get the hell out of town, get away from work, have a little change of scenery. Uh, for those of you who aren't in the Southeast United States right now, you guys may or may not know that we've got a little hurricane deciding to come up and screw with us right now. Uh, it was looking like we were going to get, it looked like we were driving into what was basically going to be a weekend long monsoon. Uh, but we got spared, if you will, Hurricane Ian decided to do that little play action fake cut up through Florida, then come hang out on the coastline of Georgia and South Carolina just in time to turn up through where we live and come mess with all of our families. But uh, no big deal. And so it turns out Josh and I are getting out of town to a warm and sunny Atlanta. <laughs> but I uh, hate it for everybody up here. But uh, hey, we're getting a break. Going to catch a ball game, hit some record stores, hit some restaurants. You guys know how we wag and wheel. Uh, going to hit you guys with a little segment from everywhere we stop in. You guys know we're going to have some fun. And uh, we'll be talking to you soon. Uh, to all our viewers uh, in Florida, we hope that you're staying safe and everything like that. Hope you're doing okay. Uh, hope your record collection isn't uh, flooded. Uh, but yeah, hope you guys are staying safe out there. Hope your families are okay. So, uh, thoughts and prayers to you guys. All right, guys. So the next time you hear from us, we'll be grabbing a bite to eat slowly before, shortly before jumping into criminal records in Atlanta. Georgia, and we'll come at you guys soon. Deuces. It's Carolina, Tales, California, somewhere greener, somewhere warmer, up in the mountains, down by the ocean, where it don't matter. Comes we're together, somewhere together, I've got a quarter. It's Carolina, Tales, California. What's up, Vinyl Community? It's your boy Chris. And Josh. Coming at you live from uh, Atlanta, Georgia, downtown Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, because, you know, um, so Josh and I had basically decided that we were kind of, um, kind of uh, not bored or, or anything like that. Just needed a break. Just needed to get out of town, needed to get out of uh, the normal grind. You know, for those of you who don't know, Josh and I work together. Uh, so we see each other more than we see our own wives or, you know, I see him more than I see my daughter. Uh, so, you know, it's one of those deals where I'm I, a work wife. Yeah. I really enjoy seeing this guy somewhere other than the job. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, the job's nice and all. It's nice to work with your best friend, but, but God damn it. Just let's go somewhere and do something fun. But, uh, so I think it was your idea. Wasn't this your idea to come down to Atlanta? Come down to Atlanta. It was your idea to come down to Atlanta. We got, we, we've got places that we always want to go to yeah. in terms of records, but I yeah. figured something that would be easy, mm -hmm. quick, mm -hmm. yeah. come down to Atlanta. And while we're at it, why not see an Atlanta Braves game? Yeah. You know, the world champ the from last year. Defending world champion Atlanta yeah. Braves. Yes, sir. Yeah, defending world champion Atlanta Braves. Going to catch them in, in Atlanta because my entire family, and most of my friends that like baseball are Atlanta Braves fans. Uh, yes, sir. And I, of course, as you guys know, you follow my channel, I am a avid and diehard New York Yankees fan. But I do respect and admire the Braves. And nobody was, no non-Brave fan was pulling harder for those guys last year in the World Series than I was. And I mean that shit. Uh, their fan base deserves it. Yeah, it's, Plus, yeah, it's good in it's terms good. of uh, this evening's game, the enemy of your enemy is your friend. <laughs> Because well, they're playing the Mets. the Mets. Fuck the Mets. <laughs> yeah. Excuse me. Pardon my language. The hell with those bastards. They should pay us rent in the city of New York. This is called <laughs> they, 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 before, before they walk into the stadium, they should call and ask if it's okay first. Anyway, if any of you guys are Mets for, uh, fans, that's cool. Leave a snarky comment. I don't care. 
and I hope you get your asses cut tonight. Anyway, <laughs> so, um, <laughs> all right, so um, I still love y'all. Um, leading off with uh, Josh, and again, great idea for Josh. Uh, Josh came up with for us to get down to Atlanta. Uh, four hour trip straight down the interstate, really. I mean, it's a really easy trip for a couple upstate Carolina boys like us. And we avoided the fucking hurricane. <laughs> we avoided the hurricane. So uh, we leave um, we leave 50s with rain and wind to get down here to 70s bright and sunny. Um, so, and I got to tell you guys, they got some good weed down here in Atlanta. <laughs> Holy crap, man. You ain't kidding. <laughs> On the street, too. These bitches ain't playing, cuz. Um, yeah. The dankest of all. Yes, sir. Oh walk walk out of the record store and catch a contact high. Uh, yeah, but um, wow. Uh, I just, uh, you know, the biggest city we're used to on a normal basis is Charlotte. Charlotte. And uh, yeah, you just don't really catch that in Charlotte like that. Not out on the street, anyway. No. Yeah. I mean, people smoking plenty of shit, but not out on the street like that. But anyway, we digress. Um, first stop that we made when we got down here, first thing we wanted to do, plan, uh, went according to plan perfectly. Stopped in Hattie B's today, has some really hot Nashville uh, fried chicken. It's outstanding. Josh and I may or may not have uh, given up the appearance of crying. No big deal. Uh, they caught criminal records as soon as they opened. So again, plan just went. It went according, you know, perfectly according to plan for us. So we hit criminal records first. Josh, tell the good people what you found. Um, or do you want to do wax and facts? Let's first? do wax and facts. Wax and facts first. All right, we hit criminal records, then we left and went to wax and facts. The reason we didn't shoot the video right outside of criminal records is because we paid. Uh, we had paid the time and we were right up on it and didn't want to get towed. All right, Josh, hit that. Wax and facts. So, wax and facts, we uh, went through there. I, I found a couple good ones. Uh, you know, like, not like high dollar records, but still good enough. Uh, Chris definitely recommended this for me. Uh, all night session with the Hampton Halls Quartet. Let's give a good close up of that. So yeah, uh, volume one of three albums recorded in an extraordinary session, a revealing portrait of a great jazz pianist. It's through contemporary. This is a OJC uh, version. Original uh, jazz classics. Yeah, original jazz classics. But if you like piano jazz, it's definitely uh, up your alley. Hampton Hall's on piano, Jim Hall on guitar, Red Mitchell on bass, and Bruce Freeman on drums. Did I pronounce that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. But, uh, but yeah, so really looking forward to that because uh, I've, I've had a few, had, I think I had one or two Hampton Halls records uh, in my collection. All so good stuff. So glad to put that in the collection. Uh, and then Chris recommended this to me and it really can't beat it for four bucks. Uh, and like the, the cover itself isn't really, it's, it's a little bit beat and so apparently someone put some tape somebody around it. Somebody put some tape on it for no reason. For no reason, There's really. There's no splits on it. There's I don't no know. splits, but. I don't know what they were doing, but anyway. Anyway, um, I'm thinking that based on the uh, address here, it might be a uh, library Maybe. one and they probably just wanted to put that there so it wouldn't it's get future nice. damage. But anyway, I digress. There would be somebody in Alabama too. So it's sorry uh, if you're from Alabama. I don't mean to offend you, <laughs> except for I kind of do. Alabama, man. <laughs> anyway, uh, but yeah, it's on the roulette uh, uh, label. Uh, Tyree Glenn at the round table. Uh, so you got uh, Tyree Glenn, uh, Harry Jones on piano. Uh, Joe Jones on drums, Tommy Porter on bass, and Mary Osborne on guitar. Uh, so who's Tyree Glenn? Who's Tyree Glenn? Yeah. Who's that fucking guy? That guy. Yeah, yeah but he's not mentioned. Like, so he plays piano? Doesn't have to mention him. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't mention him here. It's funny, I've had that record for years and I never paid any attention yeah, to it. Something. Anywho, anyway, uh, but he recommended to me, and I figured four bucks ain't too bad. Uh, yeah, so that's what I got uh, from Wax and Facts. Chris, you want to share what you got at Wax and Facts? Yeah, I went to Wax and Facts, went through. Okay, so one of the things um, that I immediately noticed that kind of took me aback, I was just telling him before we went on the video, um, you guys know how I wagon wheel when it comes to buying records. Uh, I go in, I go for the smoke. Uh, I'm going for the hard stuff to find. I'm going for the stuff you can't find in the everyday shop. That's just what I'm going for. So when I go in, my eyes immediately start scouting the wall. And 
what immediately caught my attention in this particular shop is they don't have a holy shit wall. I'm like, okay, well, maybe they got a glass case. No glass case. It's like, okay. So immediately I'm like, okay, well, I know criminal right around the corner is getting all the, is getting all the, all the real smoke in. So I was like, okay, all right. So I didn't have my hopes up very high immediately. Um, go digging. They got plenty of jacks, plenty, but it's all your basic stuff. Basic stuff. Not a record, not a single record in there above 20 bucks. Matter of fact, the most expensive one I saw, I'm getting ready to show you guys. I, just, I didn't see a record more expensive than this one, but anyway. Um, nice shop. The people were nice. They were having some nice regular musical, music related conversations in there. Cool little vibe and atmosphere, but, uh, t-shirts are nice. T-shirts are cool, yeah. but, uh, I wouldn't say go all the way out of your way just to go to Wax and Facts, yeah. um, personally. Uh, anyway, so I grabbed a couple of records. I'm a big Albert Eiler fan. Uh, Albert Eiler uh, Vibrations with Don Cherry, Gary Peacock, and Sonny Murray. Yeah, it's on uh, Heiress to Freedom. Uh, great stuff, phenomenal record, really enjoy it. Love Albert Eiler. Um, of course, Albert Eiler, one of the very many uh, jazz musicians gone from us way too soon. Died at the age of 34, mm. yeah, many years ago. But uh, brilliant stuff. Uh, actually, you know, since reminds me, since uh, I'm holding an Eiler record, is that Albert Eiler had uh, uh, been on a record basically is saying uh, about John Coltrane and Pharaoh Sanders is that uh, John Coltrane is the father, Pharaoh Sanders is the son, and he is the Holy Ghost of the uh, saxophone, uh, if you will. And um, I don't know if I'd put them exactly in that order, but it's a pretty cool little quote if you think about it. But anyway. The day. The music died, and we were singing Bye Bye Miss American Bye. Oh, wrong father, son, Holy Ghost, sorry. Yeah. All right. And uh, Rashawn Roland Kirk, Natural Black Inventions, Root Strata. Uh, for those of you not very familiar with Rashawn Roland Kirk, I actually passed this one, so. Yeah. Um, didn't know much about it. The man played every damn thing. Uh, Rashawn Roland Kirk plays tenor sax, stretch, manzello, B flat, knee flat, clarinets, flute, black puzzle flute, black mystery pipes, harmonium, piccolo, bass drum, thunder sheet, sock cymbals, bells, music, box, palms, timpani, gong, and applies the use of bird sounds. <laughs> so that's that's really out there. That's a session for for Mr. Kirk, and that was uh, yeah. For those of you not familiar, uh, I would highly recommend it. Get it into your life. There's not, doesn't seem to be a damn thing the man can't play, or couldn't play, I should say. But uh, great stuff, and best thing about it is almost every record you can think of by, by Rashawn Roland Kirk can be found for cheap. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's my wax and facts finds. Uh, Josh, uh, you want to hit the people with your uh, criminal? Yeah, that's fine. So I found uh, four records here. Uh, one of them. Uh, it was like new vinyl, and you know, Halloween's coming around the corner. Me and my wife, that's one of our favorite holidays. It, it probably is our favorite holiday. Um, but, uh, and if anybody's watched these videos before, they know how much of a fan I am of great compilations that are, you know, people had the time to put these, uh, these lineups together just to make a really cool concept compilation record. I really love that and, I, and people took the time to actually thought of something like that. So we got Halloween Garage Blues. I love that album cover, just really nice. So yeah, it's like got a, like a, a, slew's, a slew of uh, different uh, types of people on here. Iggy Pops on here doing his I Wanna Be Your Dog. Uh, you got Screaming Jay Honk, uh, Screaming Jay Hawkins uh, doing I Put a Spell on You, which is like the birth of shock rock. Uh, and you got other people on here. You got Dr. John doing Zuzu Man. Uh, and a lot, a lot of other artists that I'm not quite familiar with, like Junior Wells, Hoodoo Man Blues. Junior Wells is great. Uh, Harvey Mandel, Hank the Ripper. Uh, list goes on and on and on, but it's really a cool, interesting uh one that I can't wait to listen to. It's and it's on orange vinyl. So if you see this out and about, um, get it. It'd be probably a perfect place, to, the perfect thing to spend on uh, for Halloween. So uh, this next one I'm really excited about because it's a sealed record, uh, unopened since 1969. Uh, 
and it is. Let me go ahead and pull that out. Albert King. King does the th the king's things. So it's basically Albert King doing all of Elvis Presley's songs. So you've got uh, Don't Be Cruel, Blue Suede Shoes, Hound Dog, Jailhouse Rock, One Night, Heartbreak Hotel, Love Me Tender, It's All Right, and All Shook, and all shook Up. Uh, so yeah, and, and it's on, like I said, it's on the Stax label. Really awesome uh, stuff here and sealed. Can't wait to be the first person to listen to listen to listen to this so yeah really stoked next one uh i i've always enjoyed uh michael kane uh as an actor and this is one of his best films uh a lot of it is owed to uh the soundtrack which is mostly consisted of sony rollins uh and his orchestra conducted by oliver nelson so you got uh alfie so yeah, really awesome record uh, from 1966. Uh, great, uh, great movie, great soundtrack, and it's on Impulse. So looking forward to that. And my favorite of the bunch, the well, by favorite I mean the one that cost the most. Uh, as you all know, I'm a huge fan of Grant Green and his guitar playing. So when I saw this, I had to have it because it's like funky Grant Green. So Grant Green, Visions, 1971 original, VG Plus. Looking forward to this. Uh, yeah, enough said. Final answer? Final answer. All right, yeah. All right, wonderful stuff. And uh, for my, uh, admittedly, I already had a plan amongst coming all the way down here to Atlanta to go to Criminal. I had already kind of had a heads up on some stuff that was in the, um, the, the glass case. Uh, they, you know, Criminal is the kind of store I'm, that's the kind of store I like. You walk in, you got awesome shit in the glass, you got awesome shit up on the wall. I mean, honestly, I'm gonna be honest, I wasn't that impressed by what's in the bins, but in terms of like the rare stuff, they got plenty. And uh, so that's the kind of stuff I like. That's what I care about. I'm not, the, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to sound terrible to you guys because I know so many of you guys like to get down and dirty and get in a shop and you know, flea market and just dig all damn day long. I ain't got time like that. <laughs> I don't have time like that. I work a full-time job. I got a five-year-old daughter. I don't have time like that. Uh, I, I like to get in, find the smoke, and get out. Um, that's me. But uh, I go in and I already had a couple in mind, and a couple I already had in mind are going to be the last two I show you. Let's start for what I didn't expect to see when I was in there, but was uh, very, very pleased to see. Uh, been after this record for a long time. Love this particular artist. It's uh, Michael White, New Month. It's an original Impulse, and apparently it's a promo copy as well. I didn't know that until just now. Disc copy, disc jockey copy, not for sale. A little stamp right there on the back. I don't know what the vinyl is going to look like. Impulse, of course, you always got the gatefold. That's an interesting looking gatefold. Oh, yeah. White label. White label, baby. Look at that. <laughs> and looks pretty clean. Spot out. Yes, sir. Spot out moment. Now, I didn't even know that. I don't know what the hell's wrong with me. Yeah. I'm so happy to find the, the, <clears throat> the record. I didn't even. And it doesn't have it listed. It doesn't have it listed on the outside, but it's a. Uh, okay, whatever. Anyway. Thrilled to find it. Thrilled to have it. So, of course, Michael White, Edwin Kelly, Ray Drummond, Kenneth Nash, Faye Kelly, Leola Sharp, Eugene Skinner, and Joyce Walker. Uh, man, what a phenomenal record. So happy to have it. Next up. Okay, so the next two albums I'm getting ready to show you guys are the main heaters. Um, these are the main heaters. I came, uh, it was worth coming all the way down here to go um, to, to Criminal just for this. But, uh, the next two albums are albums I already had original stereo copies of. Um, you guys know how I am. If I can get a mono, a mono's an upgrade to me. If I can get a mono, I like to go for a mono. That's, that's me, that's how I feel, that's how I, that's how I roll. Um, and these two are two of my all-time favorite titles in music, on Blue Note and on music just in general. So it was one of those things I came down here hoping to get both. If for some reason I couldn't get both, I was hoping to walk out with at least one of them. But I come all the way down here, bought a whole bag of trades, 
uh, made a little bit of money. Uh, could you keep it down over there? I'm trying to tell my story. I'm just kidding. Um, so I go in, I look in the glass or whatever, and uh, see what these records are going to cost. And then I go give the gentleman my trades. He come back, and the amount wasn't quite what I thought was good enough to walk away with both. So when I walked out of the store the first time, I walked out with just this one. Not a bad just this one to walk away with if you're going to walk away with the just this one. But I walked away with just this one the first time around. Uh, Lee Morgan's Search for the New Land is an original mono pressing, and the shit is just immortal. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's a phenomenal jazz classic. Lee Morgan on trumpet, Wayne Shorter on tenor, Grant Green guitar, Herbie Hancock piano, Reginald Workman on bass, and Billy Higgins on sticks. Um, like I said, and of course, since I'm showing you guys OG Blue Note, Go ahead and hit you with that splat out of there. What a phenomenal record. And again, it was one of those things where if I couldn't swing them, then I mean, it wasn't the end of the world. I still had the music in original stereo format. Uh, so again, wasn't gonna cry over it. But damn it, I really just didn't wanna come all the way down here uh, and not take home the big ones. It's like I came all the way down here, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to get the big dogs. All right, so I left, leaving the one I'm getting ready to show you behind. And uh, Josh could probably uh, testify to this. It was bothering me. I didn't like leaving the other one behind. It was. I didn't like leaving the other one behind. But it was going through DTs. Yeah, I didn't like leaving the other one behind, but it's like, damn it, I'm down here for the weekend. And we had other stores to go to, got other things we want to do, and I did not want to be down here financially handicapped for the rest of the trip just based off a of one record store trip. I like, I can't have that. So I walked out. But I got on Instagram, made some contacts, made some calls, hustled up some shit real quick, and got the money, and we went back. Uh, you could even tell that the, uh, the guy who made the deal with me the first time around, you could tell he was kind of surprised to see me walk back up in there. But uh, when I did walk back up in there, nice quick negotiation, went ahead and grabbed what I should have got the first it's time. one of the cleanest album covers I've seen. Not bad, right? Yeah. yeah. Joe Henderson, mode for Joe. Original mono pressing. As you guys can tell, that clean that, that Josh was just talking about, mm -hmm. uh, the guy uh, who made the deal with me had told me that this was in shrink when it showed up, which a lot of it might explain, you know, a lot of this. But uh, they removed the shrink, he said, uh, uh, for, for sales purposes. But, you know, I guess it did its purposes in terms of keeping the uh, album itself clean, the jacket itself clean. But, uh, of course, Lee Morgan trumpet, Curtis Fuller trombone, Joe Henderson tenor, Bobby Hutcherson vibes, Cedar Walt on piano. Ron Carter bass and uh, Joe Chambers on sticks. It's an absolutely phenomenal record again. So uh, the, uh, the the wonderful people at Criminal Records got my original stereo pressings of Mode for Joe and Search for the New Land, plus a little cash, and uh, I walked out with original mono copies. So like a trade, but with some cash kicked in, did some hustling down here in Georgia, made it happen, and uh, walked out feeling like I'd done what I come to do. So very happy about that. So. Uh, Criminal Records, by the way, great shop. Yep. Great shop. Very helpful st uh, staff. Uh, everybody's super cool. Uh, I, I really thoroughly enjoyed it. Next time I'm in Atlanta, I definitely, it's my first stop, personally. But, uh, all right, so on the agenda for the rest of the night, Josh and I are going to kick back for just another few minutes, and then we're going to go ahead and uh, throw on our clothes, get ready to go. And uh, tonight we will be in Atlanta cheering on the defending world champion. Atlanta Braves as they hopefully beat the uh, the sorry ass New York Mets uh, in Atlanta tonight and take control of the division right here before the playoffs. So again, lifelong Yankee fan, Brave fan tonight, and uh, since you know we're doing we're talking about all of this and everything like that, I cannot leave up out of this post without reminding everybody. My boy Aaron Judge, 61 home runs, pulling for him to hit that 62nd here pretty damn soon. A lot of people consider that the true home run record. I personally don't. Uh, I know there's a lot of you guys that you know, have a, a feelings and opinions and everything about the steroid era and everything like that, but Barry Bond still had to hit the damn ball. And he hit it out of the park 73 times. So as big a Yankee fan as I am, that's the home run record. That's my take. You can argue with me about it in the, compliment, in the comments, that's fine. I don't care. And uh, Aaron Judge actually agrees with me, so. But uh, there's a lot of people that took steroids, guys, that can never play baseball worth of shit. 
still a game of hand-eye coordination. You still have to hit the ball. You still have to hit the damn ball. Just saying. Anyway, so until the next time and the next video and the next stop, the next everything we get ourselves involved in, uh, keep dropping that needle, you guys. Go Yankees, and tonight, go Braves. Go Braves. Deuces.